I get weirdly excited about the thought of fungus gnats suffering. I know that that's not a healthy thing for me to be obsessing over, but just the thought of them like struggling to live, I love it, I love it. Today I'm going to teach you a lesson. I'm putting back on my teacher hat and I am going to teach you a little bit about fungus gnats and how to prevent them before and after you find out that you have them. So let's just jump right into it. Fungus gnats are those tiny little black bugs that fly around everywhere. They live in your soil, they fly up your nose, in your ears, on your fruit. They love it um, and that's because they live off of organic matter in the moist places in your home and those moist places would be your plants. Our plant soil, especially when kept moist, is the perfect breeding ground for fungus gnats to lay literally hundreds of eggs at a time in your soil, in your plant, in your home. We're going to start with preventative measures. These are some things that you can be doing to eliminate the chances of them coming into your home, into your plants, and just wreaking havoc. The first thing that you can do, and something that I pride myself on being good at, I always let my plant soil dry out significantly before I water again. This is why I'm not very good at those plants that need the consistently moist soil, ferns, alocasias. It's just not my thing. I like plants that need to dry out. Fungus gnats don't like plants that need to dry out because that means that they cannot be laying their eggs and living in these places that are dry. So something that I've always done is kept my soil really well draining. That means that there are a lot of things mixed into your soil other than the actual soil that allow the water to pass through it faster. If when you're watering your plant, the water sits on the top of your soil, your soil is probably not very well draining. And adding things like pumice, perlite, activated charcoal, orchid bark, those are really great things to add to your soil to allow for that quick drainage. The next preventative measure you can take is to top dress your plant. When I say top dress, I'm talking about putting something on top of the soil right at the edge of your pot. So some things that you could top dress your soil with are Lekka balls, decorative rocks, and sand is usually the best thing because the fungus gnats can't even lay eggs in sand. So I've heard all of these things make it a lot more difficult for the fungus gnats to infiltrate the soil. I've had a lot of positive experiences with doing this. So what happens when you are sitting down to eat for dinner and all of a sudden you feel a fungus gnat go up your nose because it's just come out of nowhere? Ugh. When you realize that there are fungus gnats around, it is extremely important that you nip it in the bud very, very fast because it's a pest that can really get out of control really fast because like I said earlier, they can lay eggs by the hundreds. So tip number one is to get on it right away. Fungus gnats are a double-sided pest because you have the larva and you also have the adults, which actually now that I think about it, lots of pests are like that. So whenever I see a fungus gnat flying around, I do my best to kill it. And I know that just me walking around like this, killing fungus gnats is not going to fix the issue, but one less fungus gnat means that there will not be 100 eggs laid today. My biggest suggestion to catch the adults is to set up little sticky traps around your house in your plants that you think are infected. I bought a pack that I'll link down below that actually had six sticky traps in it and I put them even in plants that I didn't think were infected and it turns out they were infected and there was a lot on there. And I will say, make sure that you don't get them anywhere near your hair because me having long hair, I got one stuck in my hair and it was absolutely hell to get it out of my hair. Also, you can have these traps set up before you water your plant the next time around and usually if you have a pretty bad fungus gnat infestation, you'll notice that when you water your plants, they kind of fly out. And hopefully, if you have your trap set up, they will fly out and into the trap. Another method worth mentioning to remove the adult fungus gnats from your home, I've done this a few times. It's kind of a more passive way to do it, and I've had success with it. I would make a mixture of water, vinegar, and a little bit of dish soap, and the vinegar is the smell that they're attracted to, and the dish soap basically creates a casing over the top 
of the dish that they cannot escape after they've gone inside of the liquid. So they basically get trapped there. It's not as effective as a sticky traps, but it is definitely a natural way to do it using products that you already have at home, I'm sure. And by far the best way to get rid of fungus gnats, in my opinion, is to very actively target the larva that is in the soil. Because if you have too much larva in your soil, it can be really detrimental to your plant, especially if there isn't a ton of organic matter in the soil, because then they will start feeding on the roots of your plant, which you really don't want. What I have done with really great success is mixing hydrogen peroxide with water and then um, watering my plant with it after I've already given it a good water, kind of like you do with fertilizer. So you want to warm up the soil and then you put the mixture in. And I've never been super specific about that. I kind of just make sure it's a little bit diluted. I use like a bare mason jar to do it and just a little bit of hydrogen peroxide has honestly gone a long way with it. I noticed that it would start like popping and sizzling, kind of remnant of when you cut your arm and your mom splashes some of that on and you're like screaming and losing your mind and it's hurting so bad and it feels like you're being stabbed. Yeah, that's probably how the larva feel. The hydrogen peroxide actually over time just breaks down into oxygen and water, so it's nothing that will be hurtful for your plants. Another method that I have used more recently to get rid of fungus gnats is sprinkling mosquito bits on my topsoil and then watering it in. Inside of the mosquito bits is a bacteria that will destroy the fungus gnats. And I've also heard of people mixing in mosquito bits with your soil when you're actually making your soil mixture. It comes in like little, it's like tiny little rocks, so it would actually go to help add more drainage. Another way to get rid of the fungus gnat larva is by removing the top one to two inches of soil from all of your plants or just the plants that you think are infected at least because it is a common belief that fungus gnats only lay eggs in the first one to two inches of soil. I have also heard somebody say two to four inches of soil so if one to two inches doesn't work you can dig down a little bit deeper to see if you can take out more soil. And basically, I think you should just chuck that soil because it's probably so full of larva, you don't even want to know. <laughs> and when you replace the soil, make sure that that soil is sterilized. Now maybe you're wondering, how do I sterilize my soil? So what you're going to do is put soil in a microwave or oven safe dish and start microwaving or baking it. And basically you're going to do this until the internal temperature of the soil reaches 180 to 200 degrees. At that point, all of the living organisms inside of the soil would be dead and the soil is now fertile. Fertile. The soil is now sterilized. Obviously, don't use the soil when it's 200 degrees. You want it to cool down, but once it does cool down, you can use it. And then I would really suggest sealing it back up so that fungus gnats don't find it somewhere and make a new home that you just sterilized. Yeah. That would be my fungus gnat crash course. I really hope that it was helpful for you. If it was, please let me know down in the comments down below and maybe talk about some of your methods that you've used to get rid of fungus gnats. I know that there are so many ways to get rid of them. These are just the ones that I have personally used and found really great success with. I hope that you did enjoy this video, despite the fact that we're talking about those nasty little gremlin fungus gnats. Um, make sure that you're subscribed to my channel if you're not so that you can get more fun planty content. All right, until next time, bye! Adults. It's like that for a lot of... Danny! <laughs> Would you like to come say hi? I didn't, uh, I didn't want to interrupt. There's literally a fungus gnat flying around right now. They're so annoying!